Teresa, are you ready? I am ready. Are you? I am. Sister friends, are you ready? Yes. Y'all know what time it is. It's time for a cup of soul, where wisdom is dropped, truth is shared, and there's enough love for a second helping. And that second helping, sister friends, is for you. And you. And you. And for the DJ, too. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Welcome back to A Cup of Soul. I am Teresa. And I'm Candace. And we're A Cup of Soul. Grab your cup and let's do this. How you doing, Candace? I'm good. How are you? I'm good. I'm good. As my grandmother would say, fairly middling, whatever that means. <laughs> I say, what's that mean? I don't know. Got to look it up. <laughs> Fairly middling. It's good. It's mm -hmm. good. Yes. All righty. We're going to jump into some questions. It's Tuesday. <laughs> yes. So the first one is, okay, so this question I actually pulled from Instagram Live last week. Because rest kept coming up last week. As y'all know, this week's theme, this week, nope, this month's theme is the Lord is my shepherd, and we're specifically going through Psalms 21. The, wow, Psalms 23. The verses are starting to run together, y'all. Yes. <laughs> Psalm 23. So on the Instagram Live, rest came up, and Teresa kind of challenged us to take that time and be intentional and diligent about resting. So my first question to you is, what did your rest look like this week? Um, one day I, I really did nothing. Okay. And, and here's how it went. Um, we started worshiping on a text message mm. and it really like took over the day and it I was did. happy and I was really happy. And literally mm. that was my day off. And I was like, yes. And I was worshiping and messing, but it was just. I felt good because I wasn't, I don't know, I wasn't something, but it was just good. That is good. That is good. I like that. It, it did. It took on a life of its own. And I was at work while it was happening. And it was funny because I normally don't have my phone open, but I kept it open. So every time a message popped up with a song, I would just hit it. So y'all would send it and then I would play it at my desk. So it was, it was a good day. It was a good day. So good. Uh, and it was what, like six hours? Easy. I remember saying, I pretty much, yeah, it was all day. All day. Yeah. So I pretty much left. Yeah. And that just um, felt for good. For me this week, mm -hmm. rest looked like not doing two things at once. Mm. And that's what I was convicted of during last week's uh, morning lives that, you know, you'll say, hey, I'm going to go whatever it is whatever you you know i'm gonna go do this but then you're answering text messages doing emails like you're doing all these other things and i was like no i'm gonna be intentional so um it was yes well today we record okay a couple days ago we record and it drops on a different day i i i did i did nothing but i was present in the nothing does that make sense mm -hmm. like i had no agenda no to-do list but whatever I was doing, I was only doing that thing. Mm -hmm. And yeah. that felt that felt good. Really good. Because I wasn't thinking about three other things while I was having a conversation or making dinner or whatever it was. And I was like, ooh, my brain is resting. Right. Like, so I definitely want to incorporate more of that unplugging. Yeah. It was. It was so good to just, like you said, just focus on one thing. Because I wasn't multitasking that day. I was just doing that one thing. But it was just, it was a blessing to do the one thing and worship at the same time. Cry and yes. all the good stuff. <laughs> yeah. And then the next question is, you're not a grandma and I'm not a grandma either. But what would you like your grandchildren to say about 
Like the mm. next gen- Like I want them to know that when they come to me, like I'm going to talk the truth. Mm. Like I'm mm. going to speak really the truth. Cuz even like when I'm in therapy, I know this is a long answer. I mean, I I speak the truth to the kids. And I yeah. do it, you know, in a very nice way I can. But I want my grandchildren, and I want them to come to me and know that I'm going to give them the truth, and they're going to come to me for prayer. Like, I want them to know, pray. Whatever it is, we pray over boo-boo, we pray over grades, we pray over tests, we pray over applications, we pray over everything. That's what I want them to know, that they have a, a grandmother who is true and really know what it is to be a woman of God. Yeah. A- amen to that. When I when I saw this question, that's the first thing I thought is I just want to be crazy grandma Candace and praise all the time. Yeah. All the time. About everything. Like you said about everything. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. I just I, w- I want that too, the the coming to me with whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, I want that openness. And it doesn't matter what you come with. Yeah. Just come. Yeah. Just come. Yeah. God got it. Just come. Mm-hmm. And not that I want to take their parents space at all you know with my grandkids because I, I this little boy was really upset with his mom I'll give you this example and he wanted Instagram he's 10 and he's like she just keeps saying no she just keeps saying no so I grabbed my phone and I went to my Instagram and I explained it to him because he really has never even looked at Instagram he just said his friends had it and mm-hmm. I just took him to the search and I said these things right here you know how you go to the search where all the things are listed. I said, these things right here, try not to show him everything, but these things right here are not for me. Like, they're not what I want. Um, they're just here, and I can click on them, and they draw you in, because you look at it, and it's interesting. I said, mm-hmm. and some will have men that don't have clothes on, or it's not appropriate. It'll have women that's not appropriate. It'll take you to dancing. It'll take you to cussing. I said, it'll take you all over the world. This little, this little spot. And I said, your parents can't, protect you from that they can't protect you from other people dming you they somebody can see your name and still dm you and your parents are watching and have you blocked from everything somebody still can talk to you and he was like oh okay now i understand but you know that's what kind of grandma i want to be to my grandkids let me your mom and dad didn't want to get all in it but i'm just gonna get you the whole kool-aid and put some sugar on it too okay Right. <laughs> and that is the truth, because that's how Mia is with my mom. I can tell Mia one plus one is two, and she'll give me the side eye, right? Right. But let grandma come and tell her, baby, right. one plus one is two. And it's like, oh, oh I'm like, Mia. And then come yeah. tell you, grandma said one plus oh, one is two. Oh, yes. So fast. And I'm like, but I, but I just said that. Right. And But, you know, grandma says it, and it's it that's it that's it period in the sentence girl so and i love that though there's a part of me that was like you but the fact that they they have that it's different yeah you know yeah. and she does she'll say the same thing I, i'm like where do you think i got it from i got it from her to begin with ma'am right like, <laughs> yeah but it is it does I love that. that's that's cool that's I cool like that. and then your worship song for the week girl Man, I could just make a whole playlist for you. Um, sure. Mm, uh, Torn Wells and Her. Mm, mm-hmm. Uh, what is it? Holding, what is it? Oh, my goodness. Like, but really, like, just, I've been just playing and playing all, all the songs. Hold us together. Yes, that one. I'm going to just say that one for now. Whew. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't have one. <laughs> right, I just one. one, right? No, mm. and I, I have to say, I don't think I have enjoyed worship music like this in a really long time. Mm-hmm. And I don't, I really don't know what's changed. I don't know. Thank you, Jesus. So I'm gonna say, but I am just enjoying it. Just enjoying it, like the different playlists and hearing what other people are listening to and then playing that and I don't know. I am just enjoying worship. Yeah. I don't have one. I have I have worship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> for real. Yeah. So. And those are my questions. That was it this week. All right. That was so good and so painless. Thank you. Yeah, Thank they you. They were easy. 
<laughs> okay, you ready? No, but okay. yes. I got a question this week. Oh, dear. Okay. Okay. How have recent events affected your feelings about your God-given purpose? Oh, jeez. <laughs> How have recent events affect, say it again. Affected your feelings about your God-given purpose. Ooh. Um, okay. We're, we're, we're family. We're going to be honest and transparent, open. There's been some events recently that had me a little, had a little shaky moment. I had a shaky moment, not going to lie. I had a shaky moment, a moment of comparison feeling like, man, I'm just not like dot, 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 right? Those moments. And it was like, as soon as that moment came in, God was like, hey, that's not how I created you to be. And then another and, and another situation happened where how he made me was so evident, if that makes sense. Mm -hmm. So it was like, just as soon as I started to go there, it was like, no. I couldn't be like anybody else because that's not how I was made. Yeah. So I think recent events convicted, um, solidified, but also humbled me because I'm not done. Mm -hmm. As much as I am confident in where I feel like he's taking me and where I'm at today, I'm not done. Yeah. So there was some humbling, there was some conviction, and then there was like a year. That's right. <laughs> God made me like this. Yeah. You know? Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I'm with you. You couldn't have said it a better way. Um, but how have recent events affected your feelings about your God given purpose? Um, you know, in that it was it's just um when I think about the scripture, I think of Jer about Jeremiah five and one. I know we're not supposed to go deep into this, it's just an answer and go, but it says, um, Jeremiah, uh, God said to Jeremiah, before I formed you in your womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. Mm. I anointed you as the prophet to the nation. And I think the events that have happened, mm. try not to be emotional. The things that have happened that affected my feelings, it just felt personal. Mm -hmm. And I don't like it. <laughs> and um, and not that I like feel like ever I arrive. I never feel like I arrived. That's not where I, I walk at because I know I haven't arrived. But it just, it feels, it doesn't feel good. But I have to go back to this verse. God said to Jeremiah, God said to Teresa, God said to Candace, and God said to you. First of all, Bianca said, grit don't quit. Mm -hmm. And then he says to Jeremiah, before I formed you in your, my, your mother's womb, I knew you. Before you were born, I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nation. So people are going to do things. And I have to remember, just like it was for Jeremiah, before he was even born, God knew Jeremiah would be a weeping prophet. He knew I would be a weeping Teresa. And he, to speak out against evil uh, during a crazy time in the Israel history. But he knew we would be right here. And so I have to, I have to stay with that right there. I have to stay with that. And grit don't quit. That's why we read in the book. And it's like, the Lord, yes, I got this. I told Candace, I feel like I'm in a cyclone. But he set this up for me to even, at this time, even speak life, right? And then Amen. in taking those moments and asking the Lord for creativity and uh, ways to continue my walk in the purpose and be the light that God has called me in the world. Even from doing Psalms 23, if you guys look back at... Uh, last Sunday's post that there's wolves and sheep's clothing like that's for real like that is for real and when they come up close that uh, that doesn't feel good to me when they come up close I'm gonna be honest like I don't like it I don't want them close you know um they're at arm distance for a reason and um no I don't and what God showed me in this you don't have to protect yourself I got you I got you 
So I think of anything, um, that's where it is. <sighs> that was supposed to be a deep question for Candace. That was not for me. I, I wanted to shake Candace up. But I'll give this word of encouragement. <laughs> yep, I was honest. I want to shake Candace up. <laughs> Nothing the world throws at us can change God's plan. Amen. Amen. So I'm going to stay with that. Nothing the world throws at us can change God's plan because God said in Ephesians 2.10, for we are workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good work, which God prepared beforehand that we shall walk in them. And that's it. I, I know what I was created for. God knew I would be here. I didn't put myself here for show. And and um, he's prepared it beforehand, and we're going to walk it out. Amen. And nothing the world throws at us is going to change the plan that God has for us. Keep looking up. All righty, that's that. Mm -hmm. And that's the end of the podcast. We'll right. see you next see week. See you next week. Yep. Talk to y'all next week. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we'll see you next week. I'm good. Um, so let's jump into the podcast. Let's jump into this chapter. This chapter where we're going to hit on a little bit and go over the sheet that we had last week. It's an invitation. And uh, even after sharing a little bit last week, it really made me look at the invitation that we have. That God has given us all an invitation to be obedient to uh, to whatever he's calling you to. And yes, there are going to be times that things and people and uh, situations that feel like they're coming at you. But God has called us and he's equipped us with every single thing that we need to run the race that we're in. Right? Mm -hmm. Um, I think before we jump in, Candace, I'm going to read the declar uh, the little uh, solemn swear thing and you pray us in. Mm -hmm. All righty. I, Teresa, and Candace solemnly swear to read this book and honestly evaluate places in our lives where we're stuck and places where we want to give up. Um, we are committed to persevere and completing this book because we are resilient and we want to get back up every time we are down heavenly father we thank you for this podcast this week lord we thank you that we get to come together to truly talk about what it means to have an invitation what it means to be obedient and to look at things in the context in which you intended lord so i pray for all those that are listening that we are walking this out and we continue to stay humble we continue to stay open and we continue to say transparent, Lord, because just like Teresa said, there is nothing that the world can even throw at us, define us, call us, repute us, anything that the world can do that will not change the plan that you have intended for us from the day you held us. May that encourage our sister friends today, no matter what the world <coughs> is, no matter what happened, nothing will ever come against, take away, distract, or move you from the plan that God has for your life. We receive that encouragement. It's in mm. Jesus' name that I pray. Amen and amen. 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 Hmm. The invitation, and I do, I feel like the invitation that she really talks about is that of being of obedience. And um, Kenneth, you want to jump in with obedience, what the word means? and Because you're the word study, chickadee. I didn't do obedience off of the sheet. No. I didn't. I changed it up on y'all. What'd you do? I did infidelity off the oh, sheet. Oh, I was wondering who would, who would like that. Like the infidelity piece about that. <laughs> like, like cause, I did. Because when I, I was, listened to it. it go ahead. Huh? I said I was curious. Mm -hmm. I was going to do obedience. Mm -hmm. And then I got my sheet and got myself ready. And I'm looking and I was like, I think I'm going to go do this. But I don't know. I was curious, so I went. I went down that route. Okay, we could go down that route. We'll media. just we'll just tell because I'm curious where you went to with that. Um, but I, let me jump in. and I'll share obedience. What it means? Mm -hmm. Obedience means it's a simple term. It means hearing the word of God and acting on it. It means uh, to align with the will of God's will and doing what God has asked us to do. It is when you completely surrender to His authority based on your decisions and your actions and yes obedience matters so 
that's obedience and it's an invitation it truly is an invitation but let's jump into yours before we'll go back to obedience and the invitation but go for it because it's going to take us there i already know that but go it is it's so connected and it infidelity is. and i'm not going to go down the, the you know the word how the word is used right mm -hmm. infidelity has a very visceral context yes. to it mm -hmm. uh indiscretions and all of those things but mm -hmm. i i didn't go down that route i went down the root words and yes. and the latin and the hebrew i went down that route okay and it actually means just by the word disloyal mm -hmm. It means lack of faith. It means disbelief in a, a religion. And it also means idolatry, mm. which mm. blew my mind when mm -hmm. I got there. And then I started looking at different verses. And of course, what did it go to? Straight Exodus 23, the very first commandment. Thou shalt not have any other gods before mm -hmm. me. And I was like, what? <laughs> uh -huh. what? Right. And Which is all so connected to, oh, it's all connected. But it was just, what got me truly was, I never looked at this word outside of the the one context we are very familiar with. Oh, and we love it. Never, we eat it up. I've, yeah. I've never even thought about this word uh -uh. outside of that context. Ever. No. And we, so use, we use that word to just crucify people. When you, do, it's like, uh, you got three fingers pointing back at you. Right, but to truly be, if you just look at the word without any emotional response and without any, mm -hmm. just as a word, it means disloyal and lack of faith. Infidel, like, you, again, break it down, root Hebrew, Latin, I'm breaking it down. Infidel is just lack of not mm. having lack of faith disloyal that's what the word means i was like ew <laughs> oh dear which connected to obedience matters how can i be obedient if i'm being an infidel <sighs> they don't go together my faith is lacking if i'm being disloyal. If I put my job, my bank account, my house square footage, if I put all these things above God and make them my God, I have truly engaged in infidelity by definition to God so I cannot be obedient. I will not be obedient. Y'all next Tuesday, have faith. Yeah, shook me up. I, 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 I. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, like, when you really, like, hmm, I don't know. When you stop and do word studies, I'll tell you this much. When you stop and you really do word studies, it really is sad. It's really sad that we are a nation that picks up words and put it on people. Yeah. And most times put it on people because we've been hurt or whatever, but we'll grab something and we, we go in on it. Like it is like almost like it's the gospel. Right. When we right. have not even looked it up, don't really know the meaning. Um, don't take the time to know what we're talking about. If my sheep would hear my voice, it would change everything. Heal the land. It will heal land because you know what? If I'm if I shut up, yeah, I know that sounded rude. If I shut up so I can hear his voice, oh, it would shut every. That would be it. And it truly highlights the power of the tongue brings life and death. Oh my goodness! And that's, yes, that's what smacked me upside my head as I was because again. I've never looked at this word outside of the context that, mm -hmm. you know, a, a relationship context. Yeah. I mean, I, I, why would I, right? Let's be real. Why would I? I have no reason to. I know what it means. Moving on, mm -hmm. right? So I've never, so to think about this word as a word, understanding that I've only ever in my 41 years of life looked at it in one context, but seeing all, seeing the, 
it, the root and the context and the original meaning of it, I'm like, this is why the scripture says the power of your tongue brings life and death. Mm -hmm. If you speak what you do not know, you can really hurt and just oof, hurt and kill with the very words that come out of your mouth. And a lot of times we do it not because we're malicious, but because we don't know. Yeah, we don't know. We just don't know. Because, you know, let's let's give it like this. We, we eat it up. And it's just so bad they had infidelity in their life, you know, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, but being disobedient to God, what's the difference? Oh, there's no, there, there's no difference. Yeah. Right. I mean, literally, if you really think about it, what they, what, what, if we really put it out there, what it means, if we are not faithful to the Lord, then we're being disobedient. If you have infidelity in your marriage, I'm going to say marriage, then you still, right? They're the same. Right. So I would have to ask you, married to someone who does infidelity, you got to check yourself before you wreck yourself. Because we will, we will crucify that person. Correct? Yes, we, we absolutely would. But Okay. Obedience is an invitation. So let me give you something to do, right? This is what God says. Starting tomorrow, tell everybody you know, your coworkers, your neighbors, your friends, your family, that from now on, your friendship, the ones you love, like, uh, here we are. Come to the Lord. Every, every time you see somebody, you share the gospel, right? Because I'm saved, and I said that I'm a disciple, right? Mm-hmm. What happened there? Is that is that uh, infidelity? It is because you're being disloyal. Oh. oh I mean, she even says it in the book very mm-hmm. succinctly. God doesn't speak to be heard. He speaks to be obeyed. I love that part right there. And I, you, I mean, you could put any word. He doesn't, he doesn't, God doesn't do anything just to do it. The mm-hmm. reason God speaks, moves, miracles, light, whatever word you want to put in there, to be obeyed. And you obey out of what? Loyalty, right? You obey out of, of. I mean, we could pick all these other adjectives, but you obey out of loyalty. So, again, it's not uh, lukewarm. It's either A or B. You're loyal or you're not. Mm-hmm. That's it. To That's be loyal it. or to be disloyal. Mm-hmm. And an infidelity is disloyal. And, and okay, so John 2, 5 said, whatever he says, do it. Mm-hmm. Do it. But then I would have to go back and say, Candace, do we even hear his voice? No. It's, I mean, no. Because if you look, I don't if, think we go ahead. Long enough. <laughs> I was going to say, I don't think we said still long no. enough, just like we were talking about rest. We'll do other things that just as easily as we are distracted with our day to day life. I don't think sometimes we sit still long enough Mm-mm. to attempt to get to that no. position. To- no, because we, we hear our voices. Because it says God does not speak simply to be heard, He speaks to be obeyed. Obedience is discerning God's voice. It's not only to keep the door of communication open between you and God, but it also is. is um, uh, appropriate way to s- respond when he speaks and if you don't know when he's speaking then we're in trouble and being willing to because I went out I went all in on this one being willing to obey begins with the communication process following through by actually obeying lays the groundwork for God to do incredible things in and through your life so when God speaks to you, he's speaking to you to make a, for you to make a commitment. He wants your unquestioning, immediate commitment to obey what you heard. And we'll see you next week. Right. And that's, that's not something, that's, that's a process. I mean, that's yeah. the reality. It's, it's, mm-hmm. uh, that's, you got to sit with that. You got to sit with that. And I'll be real, like when I thought about it, I do, I want to see God 
you know, I want to see his supernatural activity in my life as well. I don't want to just hear about it from other people and watch other people doing it from afar. I'll be honest with you. I want to experience him. Oh, yeah. Over and over and over again. And scripture tells us over and over again, and it makes it clear that it is a prerequisite to, for experiencing God is to obey God. Right. And we must make obedience a habit. And if we're not, we're doing what? What's that word? Infidel infidelity. Yeah. But we will, again, someone have infidelity in their life. We act like they're the office people that walked. How could they do such a thing? Mm. But you didn't know you were doing it. To God. And are you willing to respond to God in complete obedience, no matter how strange or absurd his instructions may be? <sighs> That's a question. That's a good question. <laughs> yes. I mean, think about that. Like, that was Is my that, question. There, there have been times where I have felt the nudge. Let's say, call it a nudge. You know, Candace, go do that. And I'm like, are you sure? <laughs> right. And I'm be, I'm being real. I'm like, uh huh, because I don't want to. And I'm just being honest. I felt like, hey, go do this, and I'm like, who? How me? Like, right. You know, it's hard. I'm not gonna sit here and say I'm. It, it's difficult, but I can tell you the times that I didn't, I can say I wish I had. Right. Yeah. And you, you know, but, and that's the truth. We always want a, a fallback plan, ju just in yeah. case. Yeah, I want to know, like, what is it? What are my ABC options? Like, let me know. But that's when you make it about you. And I can say my relationship with God at that time, I wasn't trusting. I was still very much me focused. So it was like, I don't want to. It was very, the sentence started with me. So is it a, it's a process. You have to, I think we all have to get to that point where it's like the alternative is no longer attractive. The alternative is no longer where I want to be. No. It right? Isn't. It is. Like, is it hard? Yes. Is it going to feel funny? Sure. All of those things can be true, but the alternative of not doing it, mm -mm, I don't want to be there. So let it feel funny as I do it. Yeah. Because you think about it, we'll, we'll go here. When God gives us an instruction, right? I, I, this is what I wrote. And he gives us instructions that you don't, like, really care for. Are you afraid to even carry it out? The last thing you want to do is get up early in the morning and do it. Yeah. Like, read your word. We'll make every excuse in the book. And what is that called? Okay, I ain't going to tell you again. But we mm -hmm. procrastinate. And oftentimes we find ourselves thinking about it praying about it talking to a friend about it i even tried to ignore it don't we well let me pray about it and you said it last night when i called you what'd you say to me i said do you want to pray about it and what'd you say you're gonna put me on blast i i said when people <laughs> Teresa asked me if i wanted to pray about something and i said no and then if i ever tell you i need to pray about something it's because I really want to say no, and I just don't know how to do it. And that's because, the truth. And that's the truth because, if <laughs> again, you trust somebody, you have a relationship with them, and you know that you trust their walk with God, if they bring something to you, like I was telling her, I already believe it. the conversation's already been had. I'm just playing catch up. I don't need to go pray about it. If I say I need to go pray about it, it's because I just don't want to be mean and say no right away. Yeah. And I'm just going to put myself on blast. I didn't mean it. <laughs> I just mean it. So, yeah, I don't need to go pray about it. Yeah. And, that, you know, and that, like when you think about it, what are the things that we've said obedience to in the last month, in the last year? What might God accomplish in and through you if you respond immediately to what he's asking you to do? And I'm not telling you it's easy. The stuff I said yes to, it's not easy. It's not. But we have to trust God. If you don't, either you don't, you trust him or you don't. Either you know him or you don't. I, I really, I think, honestly, sister friends, it boils down to either you know God or you do not. 
it this should be like radical you should be like it requires radical faith and trust in god and i'm not talking and honestly this isn't about um it's not about a feel good it's not about a feel good because it's about being on your knees a lot of times because lord help me walk this out and, it, and I have to be on my knees because if we think that we know better than him, then you are in trouble. Yeah. And we're not willing to let go of the reins, so we struggle when we fight to go our own way. And I got to stay on my knees. I got to stay before him. If we want to see God operate in our lives, we have to make a commitment to keep in mind all the other people and our decisions that it can affect. And literally, like, Okay, Lord, I said yes. I said yes. Even to the point of whatever I said yes to, my husband understands. My children, are, like, you know what I mean? Like everything. Lord, you line it up because I trust you, God. You wouldn't have put this here. You line everything up. Even I'll go back to here when my son played football from four years old to honestly college, I never missed ministry. Even though I did ministry the entire time, I never missed ministry because I prayed and I asked the Lord, God, if you call me to this, you know where my mom's heart is. Mm -hmm. So games was just, it was, I, I was, that was exciting to watch games, not affect ministry. Right. It was wild to watch it. And so if it was wild to watch it, then he's, he's going to do it now right amen absolutely and so that becomes where you um can step back and you go no i don't know the steps i'm gonna take they're unknown but i'm gonna keep calm my soul is calm because the lord is my shepherd the lord is my shepherd i don't lack anything he's going to protect me like i have to tell myself those things oh and that's and that's such a good point to, to point out is that it's a, it's sometimes it's an hourly thing to tell yourself I lack yeah. for nothing. Mm -hmm. I lack for nothing. I mean, mm -hmm. there have been just the other day I was like, this, take a breath. <laughs> Remember, like I lack for nothing. It's yeah. gonna be fine. Yeah, I'm. It's gonna be fine. And that, how what greater time to know that I had to draw close to the Lord? Yeah, it's not a sign of weakness. That's a sign of I know what my answers are. Girl, yes, and it was. I, I know. What the, where to go to, to get whatever it is I needed in that moment. And it was simply just reciting, no, I lack for nothing. It's mm -hmm. gonna be fine. Yeah. And it was so sweet because when God brings you to something, and I do, I believe everything that we do, he brings it. Like, I feel like, yes, Lord, cause he lines everything up. Cause we're doing, mm -hmm. what study are we doing? Leadership together, experiencing God, right? Mm -hmm. So we got to experience God. So I'm like, yes, you, Lord, you're right on time. And then we have Psalms 23. Yes, Lord, you're right on time. And then we have John. Yes, Lord, John's taken mm -hmm. forever. But yes, Lord, yes, Lord, yes, <laughs> yes, you know. And then I was going through Psalms 23, and I'm like, Lord, you brought me here. And I'll even pray for next month, honestly, for it to just line up. And I know it's lined up for this month. So when I was thinking, I looked over John. I'm not John. I looked over Psalms 23, and I had seven, there's 17 promises, and it's probably more. This is Teresa's version, but there are 17 promises in John 23, Candace, of us being obedient, okay? I read them. It's a relationship, it's a supply, it's a rest, it's a refreshing, it's a healing, it's a guidance, a purpose, a testing, protection, it's faithfulness, it's discipline, it's hope, it's consecration, it's abundance, it's a blessing, it's security, and it's eternity. 17 and i was like god you can't tell me you're not on time you use this one little passage in the bible to shake my my world i'm gonna say my world up right now because i needed it because of the invitation that you've given me and i gotta walk in obedience and Good. how wonderfully that ties into having grit and then think about the words mm -hmm. from just the first four weeks perseverance resilience persistence like those that's yep. why you that's why you have the grit not to quit. Yeah. One past 17 promises, pick one. Right? Literally, every day. You want 17? Like, I can pick one every day. 
whatever situation is that before mm-hmm. us, yep. you have literally almost like in my mind, for some reason, I thought of like a file drawer. I don't know why. Me I too. just thought of like this file drawer. <laughs> yes. And whatever I'm going through, I'm pulling out that file. Okay. I got this promise. Boop. Okay. Yep. I got this promise. Boop. And you're pulling it out. That's why I can stumble and not fall. Right. That's why. That's why it's going to be okay. Yeah. That is why. Again, not because of how I feel or what I want, because the promises say so. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah. And he's good when you and and again, I don't want we're not perfect. I we put on our pants and our shirt and our bras and everything just like you do. I just want you to know that. But this is our this we get to tell our journey our testimonies right in the middle of it. But God is good and God is going to call us to stuff. Is it hard? Yes. Are there times you want to go, Lord, you said what? Who, me? And did you tell me like the, what about the cyclone I'm in? I want to get out of the cyclone. But when his word just brings peace, when Mm -hmm. it brings rest, when it brings protection, like you're like, okay. And he just shows himself so much more. And we must learn to make obedience a habit regardless of how you feel. Because my feelings say, girl, let's, uh, you know what? Let me close my the blinds. My feelings say get a new phone number and don't tell nobody what it is. Girl, <laughs> and close the blinds, okay? Because, woo, Those Jesus. are those days where you're like, uh uh-uh, not pick somebody else. Look, Teresa's calling. Mike, let's pretend like we got a new phone line. I know she does it. She does else. it. Mm-hmm. And that. Because if I moved to my own, I wouldn't move. Right? Oh, my goodness. I'd just be like, mm, no, thank you. No, thank you. Not that. <laughs> you know what? I'll do it my way. Yeah. That looks real busy, Jesus. Mm-hmm. Mm, I'm past. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I can't move in my own because I just went, ooh. Yeah. Went, ooh. Well, you think about this. The higher the price you pay to obey God, the greater the reward you can expect from him. Yeah. Hmm. And then I always think, too. Then you get to tell somebody. Right? I don't know. I think that's cool. I feel like that's the icing on the cake he gives us with obedience. Is I mean, look at scripture. How many times, and I, it's interesting how many times he tells people not to tell somebody and they tell. And then how many times he tells people to tell somebody and they tell. Everybody tells. Everybody tells because it's so good. Tell. You got to tell. Like, it's I came so out. <laughs> like, you know, like yeah. when you have that God moment and you, I, I can't wait to tell somebody like you that is just because nothing again just like you said earlier nothing can take that away no. you could never learn another scripture but that moment is yours yeah forever. ever ever and ever and ever it really and is you can just tell it again and every time you tell it he gets the glory that's cool yeah. every time you tell like yeah. Yes, Lord. And you can't say he's quiet because I just shared with you how he spoke to me in Psalms 23. He spoke very loud and clear. You know, um, if you choose to respond, it's more important than hearing from him. Literally, he doesn't just speak to be heard. He speaks for you to obey. So this is a relationship. It's supply. He has everything I need. Rest. Like, he is speaking. I got you. That's what he says. I am your shepherd. I got you. Like, go back to John 10, 11, for I am a good shepherd. He giveth, he giveth his life for the sheep. He giveth life for me, so he's got me. He's got me. Whew, yeah. Mm-hmm. And then, yeah. Amen. Yeah, such such a, a good one. We spent most of the time on, on that just right there. But let's jump over. Let's jump over. The next chapter is chapter 5. We're going to segue before it's time to end. In chapter 5. If you did the sheets, I, I pray that it blessed you. I pray you dug in. And as you get this next week, I'm going to pray that over you too, that you take the time to really dig in and find these things because we want to honor God. He has called for us not to be lukewarm. Mm-hmm. And don't get caught being lukewarm. Don't be caught being lukewarm. So mm-hmm. this this next, uh, the chapter we're going to do this week and what you'll get the um, sheet for is the difference of a decade. And it jumps into the Holy Spirit, but I thought about this and really didn't even realize they went together. I was doing over here, and I wrote, The Holy Spirit is at work in you. It changes your desire to match up with God's desire. We must keep our lives, our we must keep our life 
plans flexible. Never make concrete plans without leaving room for God to do something different. And I feel like that just segues way right into this one, the difference of a, de- a, a decade. Where were you at a decade ago? Um, I was 31 a decade ago. Where was I at? Oh my gosh, I, I just started going back to church. Me, it was five. Mm. Oh, yes. <laughs> she was five. So we had just started consistently going to church. Mm. Yeah. So I was, um, I was 47. I was Sierra and Chance was 11 and 17. Ooh. And, um, man, I, I, that was a time when I felt like he was jerking me. I felt like, you know, like the teacups. Mm-hmm. That's what I was on. I was on my favorite ride, the teacup. And it was spinning. Mm-hmm. And Sierra was graduating from high school and we were getting ready. And literally, I'm going to go back a decade. Literally, she was getting ready. Sierra graduated 17. It's a, you know, she just turned 18 after. Yeah. And so, um, literally, she got a full ride to USD. And it was prayer. You know, private, she wanted to go to a private school. And here she was at a private school. We couldn't pay for no private school. <laughs> and she just won all these scholarships, but it it did. It felt like I was in a. If I really went back there, it felt like I was on the teacup, and I had no control. Of that thing in the middle, and he was just. And mm. as he's spinning, he was throwing things off. Like Teresa, I got you, Teresa. You know, literally. <laughs> so yeah, did you receive the Holy Spirit when you believe? I was yes. They said, no, we have not even heard that there's a Holy Spirit. I heard there was a Holy Spirit because Acts 1 and 8 <laughs> was my passage by then because it was it. The um, It was it. Like, I'd heard it. I knew it was my Acts 1 and 8. It says, the Holy Spirit will fill you and you will be a witness. Yep, I heard it. He was throwing out stuff. Getting me ready. Okay. Mm-hmm. <sighs> yeah. Hmm. This is going to be a good chapter. I know that. It is full circle moments in this chapter yeah <clears throat> and i would even encourage you like go back go back for a moment and i will try to remember to write this on the sheet um our sheet that we'll give out it's just go back 10 years ago if you can in your mind and it doesn't matter if you go back 10 but 10 years and go from 10 to now and just thank god for all that excuse me that he's done mm-hmm. that he's done Cause he's done if you would have so told much. me 10 years ago that I'd be here, I'd be like, you lost your mind. <laughs> There's no, cause I was, I was, as you were talking, I was thinking that like I was everything. I was sickest I had ever been. Mm. Mia had, I mean, Michael and I had only been married a couple years at that point. Oh my gosh. Talk about angry with God. <laughs> I was my angry season. <laughs> yes. So if you would have said 10 years ago, Hey, Give it a decade and you're going to be, I'd be like, who are you talking to? Right. Who are you talking to me? So that's, yeah, that, that, that's a wild trip right there. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Right. And when you say it like that, like that is, that is so good. And how he just turned things around. And you would think we've been friends longer than just what we have been, honestly, when I yeah. just thought about it. Like, I met, I got, <laughs> I met Mia. Because uh, me and Mia had a good time. Yes. Uh, <laughs> met Mia. Uh, but Mia was, was she in kindergarten then when I met her? She was like first grade. She was yeah. like six or seven. She was little. Yeah, she was little. And we was having pancakes. That was all yep, that mattered. Pancake. That's how you won her over. It was pancakes. Mm-hmm. We had pancakes. So, yeah. Yeah. But I do. I, I um, encourage you guys, you dig in this. Just go back. I, I would tell you this. Before you even read it. Go back and just think about where you were 10 years ago. And just, if you can list things. And, and again, you can list things for every year that God was doing. Because so many times we forget those stones are remembrance. And somebody, I heard this too, will step on your stones. Meaning somebody's going to walk in your same path. And just just thank God for his faithfulness. Just thank him. Just take that time 
to thank God for being patient with you, um, understanding, uh, just walking beside you. And even, you know, you hear this, the saying, bloom where you planted. Look how he's made you bloom, the fullness you are. Um, what is it? First Peter 3, 18, it says, for it is better if it, if it is God's will to suffer from doing good than to doing evil. Just if you just think about literally like all the things that God has done where you had where you made that choice to do good versus evil, where you know you could have been like, I could have did that. I could have did that. But just thank him. Cause it's been I love too. that visual. Somebody's walking on your stones of Jim mm-hmm. I love that. Yeah. Like that's Oh, that's good. Yeah. That's good. Put that one in your cup. That's mm-hmm. a good. Even, you know, even, and I'll, I'll try to remember this. So just, you know, who in your life are you grateful for? And make mm-hmm. that list. Mm-hmm. Like, maybe that's just, just, it's not Thanksgiving. Thank goodness. Because that's where we go for thankfulness. It's, it is September. So we're just going to thank him. There's so much to be thankful for. Well, you didn't quit. And you saw God. God didn't quit mm-hmm. on us either. We stayed in the race, and, and that is where it is. It said, what is it, uh, Philippians 1 and 3, I thank my God for every time I remember you. Like, whew, the memories, just the memories, just how good God is. Hmm. Amen. So, yeah, this is a lot about the Holy Spirit, which I think is mm-hmm. so cool, Candace, because remember we talked about the Holy Spirit at the table? Mm-hmm. I love the breakdown mm-hmm. of um, how to hear from the Holy Spirit. I love, I mean, that could be a whole podcast in itself. Yeah. Um, but I love the breakdown that she gave, you know, just to, I think it, it really gets you thinking about the Holy Spirit living in you yeah. and that, that interaction. Sometimes right. we think of the Holy Spirit as like up on the shelf, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, I'll pick him up when necessary, but it's like, no, if you, how the Holy Spirit was left for us and yeah. all the different names of the Holy Spirit and, right. and to, the way she breaks it down in the interaction, it's like, yes, Holy Spirit is in you right now, yeah. active and alive and present. Yeah. So I really, I really like the way she, she broke that down. Yeah. And that might be where we have to go next because we can't let the Holy Spirit just be like, out there we're gonna have to talk about the holy spirit like yeah. we have to because it just it's important and yeah. it, i realize a lot of people don't realize like you have the holy spirit yeah you have it in you so yeah and it's not just you know and i think i think you may have addressed it in the book or i read it somewhere else that sometimes we think of you know father son and holy spirit it's just because it's listed you know one two and three it's not that the holy spirit is less than it's just the last piece of the triune, right. the Trinity. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's yeah. just as important. Like they, they don't exist without one another. And like right. I, you said, we forget about that. Mm-hmm. And yeah. just the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. And it's, oh, I don't know. That's, that's mm-hmm. where my heart is. I love me as most birth yeah. and stuff. Yeah. And when she hit that quote, don't, God doesn't speak to be heard. God speaks to be obeyed. And I wrote that for last week, too, for you to think about. So we're going to go a little deeper there as you go this week. But such a good chapter. I I just, I can't wait for everybody to read. I can't wait to really dive in in whatever way God carries us next week to talk about it. I can't wait. Mm -hmm. (sighs) Goodness, yes. It was good. It was good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. I want to read um, our, do you have the um, declaration for last week? Yeah. I'm really Amen. getting into declarations. I, I like that speaking life over myself. Sometimes it's just it just feels good to speak God's word back over. So you have it with you? Mm-hmm. Pulling it up right now. Okay. Yes, I do. Okay. Okay. The declaration is, I will run my race with tenacity. I will continue on even in those moments when it feels heavy, tiring, and I don't know which way to go. I know that God does. 
I know that he will guide me, protect me, sustain me, and never leave. I am obedient to where he called me to go because I trust him. He is a good God. I press forward because I want to obey. Quitting is not an option. I will finish my race well. Hmm. So I would just encourage you this week, ladies, as we get ready to end, run your race with tenacity and run it well. Obedience is an invitation that God has given us. And half obedience is disobedience. And the beauty is he will guide you. He will protect you. He will sustain you and he'll never leave you. Finish your race well. Have a good week and we'll see you next week right here on A Cup of Soul. It's all yours, Candace. Mm, Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word. To be able to come together with one another and with sister friends and just go there. Knowing that we can, knowing that you provide us with truth, mm. with guidance, with conviction, but you also provide us with love and grace because what you have for us, nothing can take away. Nothing can undo, nothing can distract, and nothing can stop. So we declare this over ourselves that we will finish our race as well. We know who you are. We know how big you are. We understand that it all rests on your shoulders. So I pray that over my sisters who are listening right now, and I pray that they say it in the space that they are in, I will finish my race well not lacking for anything, not wanting for anything, not being without anything, but being provided for, loved for, cared for, never left and never forsaken. Your race has a finish line. Your race was designed for you by your creator and nothing will ever take that away. He will sustain you, give you wisdom, tell you where to go, tell you when to sit down, and those stones of remembrance will be stepped on by those that come after you and as they finish their race. Mm. We are in this together. So Lord, we thank you that obedience is an invitation. That the, the RSVP is always good. Mm. It's always good though. The table you set before us, the promises that we can cling to, the answer is always good because you are a good God. Lord, we love you and we praise you. In Jesus' name, amen. <laughs>